Hey everybody, I was uh, just out driving around, thought I would uh, come up here to Famosa and do another train control point thing. Don't have a lot of interesting stories from Famosa. This is the south end of Famosa. Uh, see the big milling plant, Western Milling, there uh, behind me and I uh, uh, got the control point right there. You can see the signals, they are red. There is a northbound he was leaving Bakersfield when I was coming through there. I saw him, but he's not cleared through Famosa North yet, so he'll be here in a little while. We'll get a shot of him going by. See the big communications tower there. That belongs to Union Pacific. But uh, as you can see, the air is pretty foul. Still a lot of fires going on. It is better than it was. At least you can look up and see blue sky, kind of blue grayish <laughs> but uh this is a time of the year there's a lot of agricultural dust going on a lot of tractors out doing stuff and uh it's usually dusty this time of the year anyway but it's a lot worse because of the fires uh whoop. went by there forgot to mention uh, roscoe moss you can see that uh Old standard oil, Derek. There, the steel one. That uh, is Roscoe Moss. It's a pipe company. That's a they supply pipe mostly to the oil fields, but to whoever needs it, I suppose. 360. There's the old truck. No, that's not the old truck. That's the new one. But anyway, uh, don't have a lot of. Like I said don't have a lot of interesting stories about uh, anything that happened here, but uh, it's a uh, Go down the other side of the uh, control point and see if we can't catch this train coming by. I just wanted to uh, tell one story I had from here. This is the bridge across Pozo Creek. Pozo Creek is generally dry. Uh, only uh, if we get heavy rains up in the mountains that you can't see over there. I promise you they're there though. Uh, if we get some heavy rain up there and then for about a month or two a year there's actually water in this but generally not down this low uh, but uh, we were working here one day me and the uh, maintainer for this area and our boss Josh Gish and we noticed some people over here standing on the bridge we were working down at the control point and uh, we came over here and the water was rising quickly and they had got like three inches of rain up in the hills up there and a cloud burst and the water was rising visibly and uh, this Pozo Creek it heads out that way and then dumps out uh, it goes all the way to the um, there's a wildlife preserve out there off of the other side of highway 43 and it goes all the way out there but it also can flood the community of McFarland which is a few miles up the road there but they were here trying to determine whether or not they needed to warn the people of McFarland of a flood. But it got right up to the bottom of the bridge. The water was actually hitting the bottom of the bridge. And when we got here that day, it was sprinkling here, but there was no water in Pozo Creek that day. And within about an hour, it was all the way up to the bottom of the bridge. It was, uh, it was able to handle all the water, and the water went down. We were afraid it was well, afraid, but we were... Uh, called the track department we didn't know if it was going to get up over the tracks or not but it never did all right let's head back down that way all right we have moved to the other end of the control point and uh you can see here that they do have a signal up the main line cleared for northbound and uh see that little building over there old tool house or motor car house I'm not sure which that was one or both when we used to have the motor cars the little box shaped orange cars that the track inspectors rode in back in the day those had little uh, sections of rail that went back into them they were generally a little closer to the track so I'm not sure exactly what that was but in any case, they would uh, take their motor cars off the tracks by hand. There were, there were usually uh, two people on a motor car, and that's so they had little uh, handles on them that slid out of both ends, and they would, could get up and pick those motor cars up. They weren't very heavy. Turn them uh, sideways, put them on the rail, and they could store them in those buildings. 
and this is a pretty busy place uh, can get busy I should say it's not busy all the time but you can see down there you can see where the uh, power switch is there's a, an electric lock and then just beyond that is the power switch for the actual control point the electric lock is not in the control point it's just this side of it and that looks like a cross over there but it's actually just the turn out to the main line and then up there's another power switch at the other end so it's kind of a crossover but not technically because that track there the other end of it just goes off into the uh, plant that there those are side tracks this is where I did the came out and did the piece on the different kinds of uh, rail and joints and all that stuff I'll link that in the description below there's a little hand throw switch there that goes off into a yard track and then this electric lock right here goes off into this yard track which is only used by the track department now uh, it used to serve those uh, sheds up there but those are no longer operating so they're not in use that track like I said is only used by the track department to park uh, equipment in sometimes Western milling that is a huge facility I'm gonna try to finagle my way in there at some point and uh, get a little tour of that place and that is Famosa Road there and for all you drag racing aficionados the Famosa drag strip is about four or five miles that way and they held the march meet there for many many years and now they have the uh, one of the national vintage historic drag races out there every year they didn't get to have it this year because of the coronavirus that building right there that signal cabin that is actually the remote cabin for the famosa crossing uh, we use remotes in places where we have like at a control point where you end up having multiple track circuits and they use they put uh, crossing control units in there and they they make it more efficient it, it, even though it's more equipment it's still more it's a it's a more efficient way to operate a crossing through an area where you have multiple track circuits uh, always thought they were kind of a pain but they do make the system work better all right and that signal cleared that train ought to be coming through here anytime now that's Famosa you saw the sign there a couple of gas stations and a motel there this is the junction of highway 46 and highway 99 right there 46 goes over to the coast take 46 all the way over you'll end up above Cayucas and, uh, you see these uh, grapes here and just there are grapes for miles and miles square miles around here in this area all the way back there there are a couple of orchards up there towards the uh, where the Ducor branch splits off there is a I believe that is a walnut orchard up there but most of this and this probably 10 or 15 square miles of here is all grapes and I don't know if they're wine grapes or table grapes or what they make grape juice with but it's all grapes Alrighty, here comes our northbound crossings down I saw a guy over there I thought maybe he was a railroad guy or FRA or something it looks like he's just out here Contractor marking underground. Speed limit for these manifests is 50 out here.
South Formosa. CPSP 292. One more thing. See the, uh, the water tower down there? That is an original railroad water tower. Uh, Famoso was a very busy place back in the steam days. And there used to be houses out here. Uh, it's a small, it was, did used to actually be a small community. All right. But anyway, that's about all I got to say out here at Famosa. Got us a train, a little bit of information. Like, share, subscribe, click on the bell if you want to be notified of future content. We'll see you all later.